Hey kids, it's a Missenden Flyer here. You find me today in uh, the eastern part of England in a town called Dis in Norfolk. Uh, I'll stick a map up just in case you're not familiar with this uh, part of the world. And the reason why I'm here is because I'm once again doing another one of those rides from that book uh, Bikers Britain, uh, which I found the rides to be reliably good. And he's got one in there, Simon Weir, the author, called uh, Norfolk Loop. And that's the one I'm doing today. So uh, it's not going to be uh, lakes and mountains and the uh, sort of picturesque stuff, because uh, those of you that know Norfolk will know that it's pretty flat. But uh, it has got some good biking roads, apparently, uh, and some forested bits and so on. So I want to give those a try. Stick around, stay tuned. Let's see what we find. So as I mentioned, this is the uh, market town of Dis, which is on the Norfolk and Suffolk border. Uh, not a huge amount uh, to say about Dis in terms of uh, why it's famous. It's not really famous at all. Uh, there's a thing called Dis Mere here, which is a big lake, and it's just a really nice little market town, uh, if you like that sort of thing. And they ha I happen to know they have a very good curry house, so that's good. Uh, in fact, I tried it out last night. But other than that, uh, not really much to write home about, I suppose. Wait for it, thank you. But uh, coming out of here, I'm going to pick up... Um, the B1077 uh, to Athborough, uh, and that's supposed to be a pretty good riding road, so uh, let's see if that turns out to be the case. So here we are on the B1077, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, a pretty uh, classic Norfolk view. It's all about uh, flat horizons and massive skies here in East Anglia, uh, and this is no different. Uh, this road is lovely. I don't know it at all. It's the first time I've ever ridden it, so I'm not going to be herring down here because I don't know where these bends go, but uh, it's one of these great roads that basically just doesn't have any straight bits. Or if they are, they're very short. It's coming into Shelf Hanger now. I love the different names of uh, towns and villages around the country. I had some strange names when I was recently in Wales. Here we are now in Norfolk with uh, their weird and wonderful names. Most names of uh, towns and villages, you can work out why they called it, but uh, Shelfhanger. Surely there wasn't an ancient man that used to hang shells here and that's how it became famous. Maybe not. So it's quite a nice day weather-wise for riding. It's uh, about 18 degrees, so pleasantly warm. A little bit windy though, so uh, I'm hoping there's not too much wind noise on the microphone. But there may be a bit of that this uh, this video. So apologies for any wind noise. Okay, now coming into the village of Windfarthing. Maybe somebody won a farthing here once. Check that out. It's the sort of thing that really ought to have a parachute attached and go flying. another of those classic uh, Norfolk vistas with the big skies and flat landscapes. And, uh, one of the things of course that that makes it very good for, and particularly uh, in the Second World War, is uh, airfield building. Lots of big expanses of flat land uh, is ideal and in the Second World War, of course it being in this part of the country that sort of protrudes out towards uh, the European mainland, it was uh, the ideal place to build lots of uh, airfields. There are an awful lot. Hello sir. There are an awful lot of uh, disused airfields in this part of the country, both uh, RAF air bases and USAF bases. Uh, there are one or two that are still used, but not many. But when you fly down here, as I have done many times in the aeroplane, uh, you know, it's very, very obvious. All the old uh, World War II stuff that's still around. So talking about uh, World War II airfields, just coming into the village now of Old Buckingham. and. Uh, this is one that still has an active airfield, uh, which I've flown into many times in our aeroplane. It's, uh, it's now just a general aviation airfield. It's very nice to fly up for a meal or whatever here and then fly back again. But uh, So you never really get to see the village of Old Buckingham, which this is. Uh, but in the war, it was a Second World War base. And uh, I think they used to fly liberators and flying fortresses from there. It was a US air base. Still well worth a visit today, as I say, if you're interested in uh, light aviation at all. Airfield is just off on my right. Travel down the road on the right, there you get to the airfield. I don't see much evidence of flying today though, it's a nice day, it's a Saturday when I'm recording this, so uh, it's the top time that you'd expect a light aircraft to be flying into the field at Old Buckingham. You never know, we may see something. 
And the other thing that I suppose this area of Norfolk is uh, not really famous for, but is maybe known about Norfolk, is uh, the uh, racing circuit for motorsport purposes at Snetterton, which itself uh, used to be a World War II airbase, and that's uh, the Perry track that, like so many of these racing circuits, has become the circuit itself. The Snetterton is just uh, ahead of me now, about four or five miles. And is, uh, if you're a biker, great place to go and do a track day. I did a track day there a couple of days, uh, a couple of years ago rather, on my street triple. Great fun. Quite tempted to do the same on the GS actually. There are a lot of people uh, with BMW GSs there on that very day, hammering them around the circuit. And uh, they were keeping up with sports bikes, it was amazing. So uh, maybe when my tyres are near the end of their life, I should give that a go. We're just coming to Attleborough now. And Attleborough, like this, is another little market town. Uh, this one, again, has a link with uh, motorsport, which I'll uh, tell you about in a moment. So this is uh, Attleborough. One of the things it's famous for is there's a clue there, look, Gamers Industrial Estate. Uh, up until fairly recently, well, I say recently, I think in the uh, 1990s, this is where Gamers Cider... Oh, a level crossing here, exciting. This is where Gamers Cider was made. Uh, in fact, in the factory to my left. Uh, all came from here in Attleborough. Uh, they stopped producing that, as I say, I think in the 90s, and uh, now, in fact, that factory is a chicken processing plant, so that's all very unpleasant. But I said there was a motorsport link to Attleborough, perhaps its most famous resident, and this, to me, is fairly unbelievable, and it's true, is that uh, in the early part of his uh, motorsport career, this is where Ayet and Senna lived um, when he moved, first moved to Europe. And I don't know if that's because of its proximity to Snetterton or because of its proximity to Lotus Cars, who, of course, he went on to uh, drive with uh, in Formula One. But yeah, the late, great Ayrton Senna, the Brazilian racing driver, lived here in Attleborough. Unbelievable but true. Now, this, uh, this rail line that we're waiting at is the main line that runs from Norwich to London. Uh, and there, in fact, goes a train taking people to the metropolis. What a lovely little place when the sun's shining. Don't know much more about Attleborough, except that link with uh, Ayrton and Senna. It's amazing to think that such a glamorous figure, and an icon of the sort of 80s, lived in such a sleepy little town in the UK. Well, there we are. Interesting looking church ahead, I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera. Uh, Norfolk has an awful lot of churches at some point, obviously. They were very religious people, if they're not now. And there are an awful lot of these Norman-type churches around with the towers. And that one's got a spire too. What I could really do with is losing the forward focus. Wow, a straight bit of road. Haven't seen uh, one of those for a while on this route. surfaces aren't too bad either. Which surprises me because obviously it's a heavily agricultural area. You imagine they get quite uh, knocked about by tractors and HGVs. And it's certainly not like that throughout Norfolk. Well this B1077 uh, is certainly a lovely road. ones if you knew it well you could really fly down here but uh, possibly not that wise given uh, it's quite tight and wildlife always threatens to leap out of the verges at you right well I've got slightly off piece now that I uh, by mistake turned off the B1077 I meant to stay on it all the way to Watton it's only five miles away um, and ended up going straight on when in fact the road turned to the right but anyway, I like a little voyage of discovery, and this place looks as pleasant as anywhere. So I thought I'd come down this road and re-pick up the route to uh, to Watton. Well, sometimes those uh, little errors of uh, navigation turn out to be great, because uh, it's a really nice little ride through those few little villages. And I'm going to re-pick up a slightly more main road here and take me back to the route I was supposed to be on. So this is the throbbing heart of Watton on a Saturday afternoon. So this is as exciting as it gets around here. Come on, 
might be doing it a terrible disservice. I don't know anything at all about Watton, to be honest. Uh, I think it was mentioned in the Doomsday Book, that's probably all I know. There's some quite cute residents. I'll just buy that. So once I'm through Watton, I'll pick up uh, some more, again, quite twisty roads before I join a major road, the A1065, uh, I think it is. I head south back into uh, an area called Thetford, and Thetford Forest in particular. That's the highlight for me. Oh, there's a bike shop here, look. Triumph Norfolk. Excellent. Many Triumphs. You like. Anyway, where was I? Yes. So we uh, we pick up the road into Thetford Forest, which really is, I think, the highlight of this particular trip. Uh, because as the name implies, it goes through a forested area. So that should be quite interesting. So that's the, uh, the next good bit that I'm uh, looking forward to.